Hi everyone, my name is John Eric Jacobson. I'm co-founder of Jacobson Business Seminars in New Jersey. In this video here, I want to talk to you about specific techniques and strategies that you can use to stop smoking permanently. I travel all around our country and do different types of corporate work uh, using hypnosis to help people stop smoking. Hypnosis is a very powerful tool to eliminate the smoking urges. The one place where hypnosis does fall short, however, is that it only takes care of the mental aspect doesn't take care of the physical. And since cigarette smoking is a dual problem, it's a mental and physical addiction, both have to be addressed in order to eliminate the problem from your life permanently. I want to, in the short video, speak only about the physical, and right before I wrap it up, I'll talk a little bit about hypnosis and taking care of the mental. So here's what you need to know. I'm going to speak as fast as possible to get this wrapped up quickly for you. You're more than welcome to rewatch this video or take some notes. Uh, there's a lot of light in here. I don't even know if you can see the board. It doesn't matter. You can just keep reviewing the video, and I know it will absolutely help you. So here's what you need to know. You must never, ever, ever Ever stop smoking. Never stop smoking until you're ready. You have to be ready. The reason that so many people fail and fail and fail is because they haven't made up their mind to be ready. Once you're ready and you put the cigarette out for the very last time, at that point there are 11 tips that I want to share with you now that will help you deal with the withdrawal process. Once you put out the cigarette for the very last time, it takes about seven days for nicotine to leave your body. And while nicotine is leaving your body, it will cause some side effects which none of you are interested in. I mean, how many of you can't wait to go home and, you know, have withdrawal, stress, panic, anxiety attacks and blow away your neighbors, right? So let me go through these 11 tips. Although these tips are really not designed to help you stop smoking, they're really designed to help you have a good seven days so that you can detox properly, get rid of all the nicotine in your system, and eliminate the habit forever. So here are all 11. I'm going to go very fast. Remember, this only takes care of the physical part. So here we go. Number one, you have to avoid sugar for the next seven days. Sugar triggers very strong urges to smoke. Let me show you this real fast. When you and I have a balanced, stable sugar level like this, we feel good. Sugar level rises, we feel better, unless it goes too high, right? Sugar level drops, how do we feel, right? Groggy, irritable, grumpy, and so on. So what happens is when you take that first puff of that cigarette, the nicotine within 15 seconds poisons your liver. And as soon as your liver is poisoned, it releases sugar into the bloodstream, which gives you that physical uplift. A lot of people say, well, I smoke and it gives me energy, it gives me a physical uplift. I and mean, it's not really true. It's the sugar from the liver. All cigarettes do is kill you, okay? So the same exact thing happens when you light up. What happens is you light up, your liver gets poisoned, the liver releases sugar into the bloodstream, and you get the sugar hit. Now you feel good. But now your pancreas kicks in. Pancreas says, uh-oh, my sugar level's too high. So what's your pancreas going to release? Insulin. Insulin brings the sugar level down, but it brings it too low. Correct. So now, once you get to this level again, the first thing you're going to want to do is light up. The same thing happens when you ingest sugar, and it's the same process every time you inhale nicotine. You get these sugar ups and downs, which cause you to want to light up, increase the urges for cigarettes. Therefore, step number one, for seven days, and by the way, not for seven weeks, seven months, or seven years. For seven days, try to cut back on sugar as much as possible. Your goal for the next week is to keep your sugar levels stable, because when your sugar levels are stable, it prevents urges to smoke. Second, as far as keeping the sugar levels stable, I want you to have three meals a day, every day for the next seven days, including breakfast. Well, I don't eat breakfast. For the next seven days, eat breakfast. It's important that you have three meals a day. It will keep your hands and mouth busy so that you're not thinking about holding a cigarette. Plus, it keeps your pit full. When you're pit full, you're not going to want to eat junk food and then get heavy as a non-smoker. Next one, number three. With each meal, I want you to have some proteins and complex carbohydrates with each meal, especially with breakfast. Proteins and complex carbohydrates help to balance and stabilize human blood sugar levels. So when your blood sugar levels are stable, remember, your blood sugar levels are stable during the day, you're not going to get these incredible urges to smoke. By the way, for breakfast, you can have something as simple to keep yourself stable. Toast, 
Toast with peanut butter. Low-fat cheese. Low-fat milk. Notice we always say low-fat because we don't want you to gain the weight. Uh, egg. Uh, banana. Cereal. A good cereal. Not chocolate frosted sugar bombs, right? you got to avoid sugar for the next seven days. Fruit. Fruit juice. Anything that simple before you leave the house in the morning tends to stabilize the sugar levels for the day. As a result, with stable sugar levels, you won't get crazy urges and hits to smoke. Folks, these tips are critical if you want to stay a non-smoker. Next, number four. I told you it takes seven days to pass nicotine. However, if you drink five to eight glasses of water per day, five to eight glasses of water per day, you can kind of pee out the nicotine kind of helps it to leave faster and maybe you can cut a day or two off of your withdrawal. Next, number five, for the next seven days you have to increase your calcium. Increase your calcium. Calcium is a God-given mineral in the human body that keeps us relaxed. If you're low on calcium, you're going to have crazy mood swings, crazy stress levels, you're not going to be able to sleep at night, uh, you're going to be bitchy, edgy, and irritable, and those are all symptoms of withdrawal. The number one way to beat withdrawal to beat the edginess and all the symptoms that go with withdrawal is to put the calcium back. As long as you put the calcium back, you will not have strong, crazy withdrawal. By the way, for the next seven days, eat a lot of leafy green vegetables loaded with calcium. Take a calcium supplement. Uh, take Tums. Uh, yogurt. I mean, that may get gross. Cottage cheese. A lot of milk. Three large glasses of low-fat milk per day. When you put the calcium back, you will have a terrific seven days. Next one. Number, where are we? Six. For the next seven days, I want you to take a B vitamin. A good B vitamin. Um, it's got to have biotin in it. If your B vitamin says it has biotin in it, then you know you're getting a good one. And the reason we want you to take a B vitamin for the next seven days, B vitamins have two nicknames. They're called the emotional vitamins, or they call them stress tabs. Stress tabs. So, while you're passing nicotine, the calcium can kind of help keep you relaxed, and the B vitamins can keep your emotions stable. Very, very important. Next, number seven, for the next seven days, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Fruits have sugar in it, but it's a good sugar. Helps to stabilize your sugar levels, keep your pit full, you won't want to eat tons of junk food. Next, number eight, this is very important. For the next seven days, especially if you get a tremendous urge to smoke, I want you to practice taking deep breaths. Take nice, slow, deep breaths. If you ask people why they smoke, one of the most popular reasons is people that say, people say, cigarettes relax me. Cigarettes keep me relaxed. I don't know, I had a tough day, I light up and I'm relaxed. Cigarettes have nothing to do with relaxation. It's the deep breathing that relaxes you. So every time you do this, especially in a stressful situation, Common sense, when you put the cigarette out, you're going to be relaxed. But it's not because of the cigarette. It was because of the deep breathing. So it's very, very, very important throughout the next seven days especially. You practice deep breathing. It helps to oxygenate the system. Very powerful. will help you tremendously. Next, number nine. It is critical after every meal for the next seven days, you brush your teeth. Nicotine and nicotine buildup. Uh, gets stored in our saliva glands. So while you're chewing, our saliva comes up, and so does the nicotine. And after every meal, you're going to have that taste in your mouth, and that taste ends up making you want to smoke. Not because you had an urge, but because you had that taste in your mouth. So it's critical after every meal for the next seven days, you should brush your teeth after every meal. You should also be doing the tongue and the gums, by the way, help to clean out the mouth and uh, help you feel good. You won't get any urges to smoke. Next, number 10 and 11. It is critical for the next seven days, you try to avoid caffeine as much as, ca as possible. Caffeine is a drug. Now listen, don't get upset now. Caffeine is a drug that stimulates and excites the nervous system, makes you feel edgy. As soon as you're edgy, you're going to want to smoke. So if you have to have coffee, you absolutely can't live without coffee. You're thinking to yourself, John, I can't come off of two drugs this week, right? Then listen. Have your one or two cups in the morning, and if you need any more throughout the day, try to have decaf. Decaf is better than regular caffeinated, especially while you're passing or detoxing nicotine. And 11, please don't get upset. It's only for seven days. 
Not for seven weeks. Try to limit your alcohol as much as possible for the next seven days. Alcohol is loaded with sugar. Alcohol throws the sugar levels off. And when your sugar levels are off, it makes you want to smoke. If you have to have alcohol, you absolutely can't live without it. You have to. You must have a large meal. A large meal before you drink. This way, most of the sugar will get absorbed in the food, and you won't get that much of a hit. So, please, whatever you do, get a chance, rewatch this tape, listen to these, and apply these eight tips. They'll help you get through the seven days and help you detox properly so that you can avoid nicotine forever. If you're interested, by the way, in hypnosis, Jacobson Business Seminars has a very powerful hypnotherapeutic CD that you can order off of our website. It uses hypnotherapy and behavior modification techniques to program your brain to change the way you think about smoking. It's a powerful tool and it will help you. So simply visit jacobsonprograms.com. Remember, Jacobson is spelled J-A-C-O-B-S-E-N, jacobsonprograms.com. Go to our Shop Jacobson section, and you can pick the CD up there. Thank you very much. Good luck. You're on your way to becoming a permanent non-smoker.